I'm now planning to give you an introduction to the use of filters uh, in measurement systems. Filters that are in most cases used for analyzing in the sampling process or it could be for improving maybe the signal to noise ratio. Filters uh, analyzed in their frequency domain always have a relation to the performance in the time domain, the dynamic performance and also the impact of the different system components on the overall uh, dynamic performance of the measurement system. Uh, so the outline of my presentation will be uh, for the filters and analog filters, digital filters and the dynamic performance of a measurement system. What we see here is a general measurement system consisting out of a sensor, amplifier, filter a to D converter and signal processing. And this filter is an analyzing filter that will limit the, the bandwidth of the signal before it is sampled by the A to D converter. And this analog filter um, is time continuous and it is amplitude continuous. But it can be implemented both as active or passive. Active analog filters are built from active components, uh, operational amplifiers. Passive components are built from only passive components such as resistors, capacitors, inductors. The signal processing, uh, this is usually implemented in a signal processor, a microcontroller or could be programmable logic. Those are digital filters that are usually time discrete and also amplitude discrete. There are some cases of uh, time discrete filters that are also amplitude continuous, continuous uh, this switch capacitor filter, but that is, uh, they are, are existing, uh, existing quite rarely, I would say. So the most common digital signal processing is time discrete and amplitude discrete. This is a, a picture that is showing a classification of uh, different kinds of filters. So the first one here is a bandpass filter that we can see from its, um, its amplitude transfer function. Um, and uh, the amplitudes of frequencies above this passband and below this passband are stopped, while within the passband we allow the frequencies to pass the filter. Uh, the reversely we have for the band stop filter, so uh, there is a, a small um, stop band here in the middle and above this stop band all the frequencies are allowed to pass and below the stop band all the frequencies are allowed to pass but within the stop band the frequencies are not allowed to pass. A low pass filter that filter will allow the low frequencies to pass while the high frequencies are not allowed to pass the filter. And correspondingly, the high pass filter allows the high frequencies to pass, but the lower frequencies are not allowed to pass. This is the, the basics behind the, the filter classification. On to bandpass filter, bandstop filter, low pass filter, and high pass filter. And filters, they are, they are uh, usually characterized by its amplitude transfer characteristics in combination with also its phase transfer characteristics. <clears throat> and the phase transfer characteristic is describing the uh, amount of delay that the filter is imposing on the signal, signal at different frequencies. Uh, both signals on the input and signals on the output as well as also the performance of the filter here can be analyzed both in its time domain as well as also in its frequency domain. So we have uh, a time continuous function when we are analyzing the input signal or we have a, 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 a continuous function in the frequency domain when we are analyzing the, the system in its frequency domain. And corresponding the behavior of the filter can also be analyzed as its response in the time domain to an, uh, an elementary function, could be a step function or could be an, an impulse function and it, we have the corresponding uh, behavior in its frequency domain showing how it will allow the, how the frequencies to pass the system and also how it will delay the frequencies. And in a time domain we, uh, 
we describe the processing uh, by the filter as a convolution and using a convolution sum and that processing can equally be described in it, its frequency domain as a multiplication of the input signal the frequency transfer of the input signal multiplied with the transfer function frequency transfer function of the system musicians or other people who really enjoy to listen to to good music and they enjoy high quality music from a high fee stereo equipment they usually claim that if there are any uh, such things as phase distortion on the amplifier and the uh, high fee stereo then this phase distortion can be very easily uh, they can hear it very easily and by this phase distortion is meant that all the frequencies in the music is not delayed equally through the system so there is a variation among different frequencies so have a look at this uh, simple presentation and more mathematical analysis filters without phase distortion must delay all frequencies equally and consider a general sinus signal that has a phase shift so this is the, the time continuous function uh, y of t equal to sinus omega t plus phi of omega where phi of omega is a function that is describing uh, the phase shift as a dependency to the frequency omega and uh, mm, we can rewrite this as sinus of omega so we we put this omega on the outside so it's omega t and that means that we need to divide uh, this um, term with omega so we have this uh, phi of omega divided by omega and then all frequencies will be delayed equally with uh, the time td if the phase shift is proportional to the frequency such that uh, this phi of omega is equal to minus td uh, uh, times omega so we rewrite this uh, phi of omega as minus td of omega and then this uh, minus td of omega divided by omega can be rewritten as simply minus td and what we have shown then is that if uh, we have a, 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 a function for the phase shift that shows an, an, a phase shift that is increasing uh, uh, with, the, uh, with the frequency proportional to TD then all frequencies will be delayed by the same time of TD so by definition uh, this what is called group delay TD is equal to minus the derivative of the phase function phi of omega uh, uh, in conclusion is that a filter without phase shift distortion has a linear phase shift function so uh, if we have a linear phase shift function it means that all the frequencies will be delayed equally and when it comes to sound this uh, guy who is listening to this uh, high fist stereo or the musician musician he will be very satisfied with the performance of this high free equipment because it has a, a linear phase characteristics and he can hear no like phase distortion i will now develop the uh, system laplace system uh, transfer function as well as the uh, uh, frequency transfer function for a first order uh, passive low pass filter uh, built from a resistor and a capacitor and these are developments that you most likely have seen before so it will be a repetition of your previous knowledge what we see here is a circuit diagram of an rc low pass filter with the input voltage and the output voltage the resistor and the capacitor and i'm now going to develop the laplace system transfer function and by doing so i need to replace the resistor and the capacitor with corresponding laplace impedance <clears throat> and the resistor will simply be replaced by r and the uh, laplace impedance for c will be 1 divided by sc <clears throat> where s is the complex uh, laplace variable so the uh, output voltage is simply the input voltage divided by this expression and now uh, the root of root of the uh, denominator uh, uh, polynomial uh, is the pole of the system and this system thus has one single pole at s equal to minus one divided by rc 
because then at s equal to this, this uh, denominator polynomial will be equal to zero. We will continue our development for the system transfer function being equal to the output voltage divided by the input voltage, uh, simply being this expression. And now this expression can be rewritten uh, based on its pole frequency, so it's equal to 1 divided by 1 plus s through uh, omega p, where omega p is its, uh, its pole frequency equal to 1 divided by rc. Now we know that uh, this is a, a passive filter and it has no active components, so the passive filter will always be stable. And for a stable uh, uh, filter and a stable system, you are always allowed to uh, replace S with equal to J omega for a frequency analysis along the J omega axis in the, Lapla in the Laplace space. So by doing so, we get the corresponding uh, frequency transfer function uh, H of J omega equal to 1 divided by 1 plus J omega divided by omega P. And then from this we can develop the corresponding amplitude frequency transfer function uh, that will look like this expression and also the corresponding argument of this expression being the, the phase transfer function looking like this. And now I should say that uh, there might be some of your students who are not familiar with the, uh, the Laplace uh, system uh, development so what you can do is that you can use uh, the j omega method and you will reach the same result here for the frequency transfer function and the amplitude transfer and phase transfer function because i know it is uh, it is often the j omega method that is used uh, in the beginning for circuit analysis yeah what we see here on the left side is a pole zero plot and the pole zero plot is a graphical representation of the Laplace system function where s here is this complex Laplace variable and you have the imaginary part uh, of the complex variable and the real part of the complex variable and as you remember from previous slide we had a pole at s equal to minus 1 divided by rc which is here indicated by a cross then there is an additional level constant k is equal to, to 1, which is the same as the, the constant that you are multiplying this polynomial with. So from this uh, pole zero plot, it is possible to write the mathematical definition of the Laplace uh, system transfer function. And this is an analysis of the frequency transfer function of the frequency omega. Uh, so this uh, can also be rewritten to be the same, uh, rewritten as a, a Laplace system transfer function. The pole frequency here is equal to the 1 divided by RC, which kind of relates to the pole that is residing here at minus 1 divided by RC. A board plot or a board diagram is an approximate representation of a system's uh, amplitude transfer function and phase transfer function and it can be used to describe the characteristics of the filter and for the amplitude transfer function and the phase transfer function we are using its asymptotes as the, the approximation let's have a look at this presentation uh, what we can see here is the the amplitude transfer function for the first order um, low pass filter that we were uh, analyzing in the previous slides and then from this expression we can conclude that if uh, the frequencies omega are much less than the pole frequency omega p then uh, the value of this amplitude transfer function will be approximately equal to one and for frequencies omega that are much much higher than the value of omega p then you can neglect this number one and the value for this amplitude transfer function will be equal to omega p divided by omega so then one can ask ourselves like how much does the signal alternate uh, alternation increase for every 
decade, every increase of the frequency by one decade for omega larger, much larger than omega p. So we can investigate this by uh, using the fact that for frequencies much larger than omega p, then the the amplitude transfer function will look like omega p divided by omega, and we take the the logarithmic scale, the twen 20 uh, times the 10th logarith of omega p divided by 10 times omega minus uh, 20 times the logarithm of omega p divided by omega. So there is a 10 times difference, one decay difference between those uh, those points that we are, are, are uh, comparing on the uh, amplitude transfer function. And if we develop this expression, it will be equal to 20 times this expression, uh, the logarithm of omega p uh, minus the logarithm of 10 and minus the logarithm of omega to, up to this point. And then minus the logarithm of omega p uh, plus the logarithm of omega. Uh, and then we can see that we have the logarithm of omega p uh, and minus the logarithm of omega p so those uh, terms can be uh, eliminated and then we have minus the logarithm of omega and plus the logarithm of omega which also can be eliminated so the only thing we have left here is minus the logarithm of 10 which is equal to minus 1 times 20 will be minus 20 decibel so it means that for every time we increase the frequency 10 times uh, then the the um, the amplitude ordination would increase with 20 decibel, and we can use this fact and these conclusions to draw an asymptotic uh, representation of the amplitude transfer uh, diagram. So this is the the uh, frequency amplitude transfer function, and this. Uh, axis on the horizontal axis is the frequencies and then here we have the uh, frequency of omega p the pole frequency and for all the frequencies below this uh, um, pole frequency omega p we assume that the alternation is equal to zero uh, decibel and then for all the frequencies above then we have an, a slope of uh, 20 minus 20 decibel per decade so at 10 times omega p we have minus 20 decibel at uh, 100 times omega p then we have minus 40 decibel and at um, 1000 uh, uh, omega p then we have minus 60 decibel mm, we can continue with also analyzing the frequency phase transfer uh, diagram uh, and we are having this expression from the previous development for the first order low pass filter minus the arc tangents of omega divided by omega p and then we can evaluate this expression for uh, omega equal to omega p uh, and they are then equal to one because uh, if omega is equal to omega p then it's this arc tangents of one so it will be minus 45 degrees and then we make an evaluation at omega equal to 0 0.10 omega p uh, 0 0.1 omega p and 0 0.01 omega p and then we are increasing uh, two times one decade for uh, 10 omega p and for 100 omega p and we have the corresponding angles here mm. then we can have a look on the next slide so we can use uh, first of all at at uh, omega equal to omega p then we have four, minus 45 degrees phase difference and then we can use 0 0.1 omega p as the approximation for when the, the phase uh, uh, transfer function is equal to, uh, to 0 degrees and ab above uh, 0 0.1 omega, omega p we are using this slope and for uh, 10 omega p which is 10 times the pole frequency then for all the frequency above 10 times then we are assuming a phase shift of minus 90 degrees uh, and on the next slide we are going to evaluate how good and make comparison how good will this uh, approximation be 
So if we look first at the amplitude transfer uh, diagram, then the blue plot here uh, represents the real simulated um, amplitude transfer function. And then the green dashed line corresponds to uh, the asymptotic uh, board plot. And you can see that it is following uh, the real function mostly except for uh, around this uh, pole frequency. There is a small deviation. But in most cases, I would say that the representation of uh, the ball plot is good enough for describing the amplitude transfer characteristics of a filter. Mm -hmm. Then here we have the corresponding uh, board plot for the phase transfer function. So the dashed line is the board plot and the, the blue line again is the real uh, computed phase transfer. And <coughs> at uh, frequencies equal to omega p uh, we have minus 45 degrees for both the approximation and for the real function. And then close to omega p and and also at this position here, there are small deviations. But still, you can say that the, the representation by the, the ball plot, this approximation, is a reasonably good approximation of also the, the phase transfer function of the filter, this first order filter. I mentioned earlier in this presentation that uh, uh, filters, analog filters, can be implemented both as passive filters with the use of only passive components, uh, but also as active filters with an active component such as an operational amplifier. And the benefit of using active filters could be that uh, you can avoid using uh, inductors as components because inductors are usually very large and bulky to uh, assemble on circuit boards. And they usually have also quite large tolerance in, in manufacturing. And still you can implement all kinds of filters like bandpass filter, low pass, high pass. And another possible advantage is that uh, you can analyze the separate filter blocks by each of the uh, blocks made from, from an active component. Uh, and you can combine those blocks and be reasonably sure that the different filter blocks will not interact and change the performance of each other because of the reasonably low uh, output impedance of the uh, operational amplifier. So in that case it, it is r quite simple to use the bold plot as an, an analysis of the complete uh, system performance, the system behavior in the frequency domain. So have a look at this slide where you, you see a circuit diagram of an, an active uh, first order uh, low pass filter with an operational amplifier. Um, and you see here the corresponding uh, frequency transfer function uh, by J omega. And you can see it looks almost the same as the circuit analysis that we made before on the, the, uh, the passive uh, filter, except for the level constant K that is now R divided by R in, and uh, also this minus sign. So this is a, an active filter block that corresponds to a first order low pass filter. I mentioned earlier that uh, filters could be used to improve the signal to noise ratio. And this is all about using the filters to selectively only allow the frequencies pass through the system where you have the signal. So if you have good knowledge about the frequencies uh, that are contained in your signal, then you can avoid all the, the wide spectrum uh, white noise to pass into the system. And this is a way to improve the signal noise ratio. I will show you a very simple example on the next slide. Uh, I made this example by using simulations in MATLAB and on the leftmost side there is a graph that shows the, the uh, clean sine wave form without any kind of added noise. So one can say that the, the SNR here, the signal to noise ratio is like infinite, a 200 hertz sinus signal. And then on the next graph, uh, if we walk to the right, then uh, I have added white noise to this sinus signal 
to reach an SNR of approximately like 0 0.2. Um, so you can see that it is a lot of noise and it is not that easy but you can of course understand that yeah that should be uh, some kind of uh, waveform in, in all that noise. And then we apply a first order low pass filter where we se select the, the, um, the uh, pole frequency of that first order low pass filter such that we still allow the frequency of 200 Hz to pass, uh, pass the filter. And then we can reach a view if we plot this signal after the low pass filtering that now much more looks like a, a sinus waveform but still with some added noise. But I think you can like intuitively also understand that the signal noise ratio is so much higher on this waveform than compared to this waveform. And we have actually been able to improve the signal noise ratio from 0 0.2 to uh, 10. Um, so the conclusion that we can draw from this simple example is that it is possible to improve the signal to noise ratio for a sensor signal if we know that the bandwidth of the desired signal is limited. Because if, if the, we know that the sensor signal is spread over a, a large uh, amount of, of frequencies, a large bandwidth, then it can be hard to select a, a filter that will reduce a lot of the noise. Uh, the more narrow we can select the bandwidth of this uh, filter to select only the sensor signal, the more likely we can we have a chance to improve the signal to noise ratio. So far, we have only been uh, discussing the use of analog filters, but we have also the digital filters that can be implemented as digital signal processing in microcontrollers. Uh, signal processors or uh, field programmable gate arrays and those filters they have they do have a lot of benefits that i would like to show you have a look at this slide where i have put together a number of comments on these filters um, filters can be implemented more efficient in digital circuitry than compared to analog techniques and we can give some example of this, that the analog high order filters are often more expensive because of uh, a lot of components, additional components uh, that needs to be added to the circuit board and um, usually there is a, a microcontroller or some computing uh, platform where you can move the filter into this computing platform without having too much of additional costs for this. Digital filters can easily be made with linear phase characteristics. We discussed this before the the the, uh, the importance of linear linear phase characteristics in order to avoid this uh, phase distortion that can easily be heard for for example for music <coughs> software or firmware defined implementations that we're talking about here they also enable updates in the field that you can easily update a product in in field if you just send out a new software or new firmware uh, it allows for parameterized filters and also even adapted filters. And by adaptive filters we mean filters that can change its uh, parameters based on, on the, the environment they exist in, based on how the signal and the noise behaves. Uh, they are much easier of course to test in production because you will not be dependent on, on components such as uh, capacitors and and inductors that will have a, a large uh, tolerance in, in, in component values. Data filters are classified into infinite impulse response filters, IIR, and finite impulse response filters, FIR. Mm -hmm. High order filters require long impulse response functions and are implemented more efficient in IIR filters due to the feedback mechanism. But you be, must be aware of that when you're going to this feedback loop and the IIR filters, those filters, they can be unstable. So they are, you need to have use more care when you're designing these filters. FIR filters, on the other hand, they are always stable systems and can easily be made also with linear phase characteristics. I have now uh, an idea that I would like to present to you as a very simple example of a 
digital filter and then analyze its behavior uh, both in the time discrete time domain as well as also in its frequency domain so have a look at this presentation we can start with showing this simple data flow graph and these symbols here means that we are applying the signal with a constant and this means that we are, are adding the si si signal and this element here is a delay element which means that the signal is delayed one computational step or one clock cycle one can also say uh, this is a sequence of numbers being the the input signal where n is the the index variable then of the the input signal and you have the corresponding output signal y of n and now we are describing the behavior in the discrete time domain of this filter as a difference equation so we can say that y of n is equal k times x of n means this multiplication plus uh, 1 minus k times y n uh, minus 1 because we have this delay element here so we, on this point here uh, on the input of the multiplication this is where we have y n minus 1 because of the delay and then we are multiplying with 1 minus k so this is the expression for the output uh, signal that is dependent both on on the input signal as well as also a time delayed uh, a portion of the time delayed output signal so there's a feedback loop here so with this uh, circuitry it's possible to implement an, an IIR filter with an uh, infinite impulse response and then we are going to apply a special case of the Laplace transform that is called the Z transform which is a, a Laplace transform for a time discrete system and for, th for uh, those of you who may not be familiar with this kind of mathematical methods then I simply advise you to follow this uh, presentation anyway it will maybe broaden your views and give you some ideas about what you could study more in, in future in later courses so the Z transform uh, of the output Y of Z is equal to K times the Z transform of the input signal X of Z plus 1 minus k times uh, uh, the minus 1 power of z uh, multiply with the transform with the z transform of the output signal and this uh, minus 1 times the power of z comes from the delay of, of one uh, uh, computational step or, or clock cycle and plus y minus 1 which means that we have an initial condition here but in usual cases when you are applying this kind of, of, of um, transformation you are assuming that the system has zero initial conditions which of course simplifies the computation a lot so we are simply assigning this y minus 1 to 0 and then we can rearrange this expression in normal uh, algebraic development so uh, y of z is equal to this uh, yeah, times this expression is equal to k times the uh, input the transform of the input signal and then the transfer function is the the uh, output signal uh, the transform of the output signal divided by the transform of the input signal which ends up in this kind of expression and we are now going to continue with this expression then on the next slide so we have the transfer function that looks like this and now we can apply the inverse Z transform in order to get the impulse function which means that if you are if you are sending an impulse on the input then this uh, result will show how the system will respond to this impulse uh, and it will be like an infinite impulse response that can contain an infinite time so uh, H of n is the inverse uh, Z transform of this uh, transfer function and you can identify this in, in, in tables with this unit here that corresponds to uh, this uh, 1 minus k uh, up in the, uh, the nth power of, of 1 minus k times uh, the step function u of n and then multiply with k is this uh, level constant here 
Now we can also conclude from this pol the uh, denominator polynomial of uh, the transfer function that we have a pole in zero equal to mi one minus k, and there is a zero also in the origin because we have the uh, said here in the numerator. And the uh, the poles are are defined in the stability of the system, and the system is stable for for k between uh, zero and larger than zero and less than two, because outside this uh, outside this range, then the pole would end up outside the unity circle, or it could be exactly on the unity circle. So when the pole is exactly on the unity circle, it is marginal stable, and outside the unity circle, it is unstable. And we are interested in the frequency frequency behavior of this system so we need to analyze a stable system and when it's stable uh, applying to this condition here then we are allowed to exchange uh, this said this uh, La complex Laplace variable with uh, e, uh, the, the j omega power of e so uh, if we do that then we end up in, in this expression and we can develop the the amplitude uh, characteristics of this expression uh, to be equal to, to what we see here. And now on the next slide we are going to plot this uh, amplitude uh, transfer characteristics based on different values for this uh, constant k, which is a, a, a parameter of this filter. And it seems like if we have a low value for k, uh, close to zero, we cannot have zero because then it will be uh, unstable. Then we have this blue line here and it seems to appear like a low pass filter. But on the other hand, if we have the higher uh, allowed value like k equal to 1.9, then we will have these characteristics, which means that we have something that looks like high pass filter. And actually this kind of makes sense also, you can understand this intuitively if you're looking into the signal flow graph, because if you have a low value of k, which means that you are taking into consideration very small amount of the input signal, while at the same time you are taking much more uh, consideration, uh, meaning you are multiplying with a larger factor. Uh, the delayed factor of the output signal so it means that this kind of this feedback loop creates kind of a memory and the only way you can change what this this one is, is memorizing is by adding more of the input signal and this is allowed uh, for the small value of k to be have a very low influence so it means that it will very it should be slow kind of to slow to react on 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 new changes on the input signal but on the other hand, if you have k equal to 1.9, then one can understand that, that it will take uh, the input signal much more into consideration than it will try to memorize the values of the old signal. So if you have a higher value of k, it means that the, the, this filter should be able to respond quicker uh, to, uh, to sudden changes of the input signal. So that was... Um, more of an intuitive uh, analysis of this uh, signal flow graph that kind of corresponds to the uh, mathematical development that we have done here and this characterization of its amplitude transfer characteristics. As last topic of this video presentation I would like to discuss with you about the dynamic performance of a system and by dynamic performance is meant the system's uh, ability to respond quickly on the on a sudden change of the input signal and to as a sudden change when you're analyzing the system you are using some kind of elementary function and there are two elementary functions that I know about and one is the step function unity step function and the other one is the impulse function and the unity step function is the, the one that we are using when we are looking into the dynamic performance of the system um, so let's have a look at uh, how I will analyze the dynamic performance of a first order uh, low pass filter. Before we analyze the low pass filter in its frequency domain, but now we are going to analyze the filter in its time domain and how it reacts on sudden changes on, on input. Uh, 
So what you see here again is the circuit diagram of the first order low pass filter, a passive filter with the input voltage and output voltage. And this development was partly done before. Uh, we develop uh, by using the uh, the uh, corresponding uh, Laplace impedance for the resistor and the capacitor, we were able to reach this expression before when we did the frequency analysis. But now we are assuming that the input voltage is a step function and the uh, Laplace uh, transform for a step function is equal to 1 divided by s, where s then is this complex Laplace variable. So, uh, if we substitute, substitute uh, u in of s with 1 divided by s, then we will get this expression. And now we will need to do this uh, uh, decomposition of this partial fraction. So we can divide this uh, expression into two terms. Uh, one term that has the denominator of s and the other terms that has the denominator of 1 plus src. And in the end, we will end up in this kind of expression. And then from this expression, it is possible to make the uh, inverse uh, Laplace transform by using tables. And then we can, in the table, identify this term as being the unity step function uh, u of t. And this term will be equal to this exponential function, this exponential function that we see here. And uh, in the end, we will have this kind of a exponential response of the system. Uh, what we have done here now is to actually to solve a first order uh, differential equation. And if you as a student are not aware of the use of the Laplace transform, uh, then you can also solve this, uh, this problem, uh, solving the, the, uh, the time continuous time function u of t on the output as a differential equation. But let's have a look now on the plotting on the, the next side of this response based on, on different kind of time constants tau. So we have been using for, for uh, the time constant of 4 seconds, 2 seconds, 0 0.5 and 0 0.1 second. So it seems like when we have a larger time constant then the system will be slower it will react to a sudden change on the input uh, in a slower with a slower time and we can uh, we can analyze uh, also how long time what we usually refer to as the rise time how long time it will take for the system from from transit from 10 percent of the final uh, voltage uh, to 90% of the final voltage and this is uh, according to the definition of the rise time and fall time. So the rise time then we can compute as 2.2 times uh, the time constant tau. And then tau is equal to 1 divided by omega p where omega p is the, the pole frequency of the system. And the pole frequency of the system, we can convert it into the pole frequency of the system, which is 2p times the pole frequency. And if we are using the pole frequency as the bandwidth of the system, then we will end up in 0 0.35 divided by the bandwidth b. b is given as the bandwidth given in, in hertz. The development that I just showed you was for a single uh, passive low pass filter of first order. And you can think of that this low pass filter could be a part of your own measurement system. And then imagine that you're going to use this measurement system to also measure the rise and fall times of another test object. Then I think it makes sense that the, the, uh, the rise and fall times of your own measurement system must be a lot more quicker and faster than compared to the test object that you're going to analyze. So have a look at this uh, presentation here where I have been thinking that your measurement system could be made out of a sensor, an amplifier, a filter and then an oscilloscope in the end that can be used to, to measure the uh, rise and fall times of your test object. But then uh, uh, both the sensor and the amplifier and the filter and oscilloscope they have all a certain 
uh, time constant associated with it t1 uh, tau1 to tau4 and from this you can uh, compute the corresponding uh, rise times and it is possible to make an estimation of the the total rise time for the complete uh, measurement system by adding the square of all the rise times and taking the square root out of this sum and I think from this it's possible to make a conclusion that the bandwidth of all the components in a measurement system both the sensor, the amplifier, the filter and the oscilloscope in this case, case must have a bandwidth many times larger than the bandwidth of the measured signal if you want to measure the rise time or, or any other property related to the dynamic performance so there is a, a relation between the rise and, and fall times and the bandwidth of, of the each individual com, uh, component of your measurement system as well as also for your complete uh, measurement system. And the bandwidth of all the uh, components that are included into your measurement system, that bandwidth must be many times larger than uh, the bandwidth of the signal that you are going to measure. So that was the same thing as I said before, that the, the rise and fall times of each individual component must be many times quicker than the rise and fall times for the object that you are going to measure. I will now try to summarize this video presentation. And I have been giving you a review of this theory of uh, filters, uh, both analog filters and also digital filters, analog passive filters and analog active filters. But I think I have also <coughs> put the filters into a context of the measurement system and giving you some ideas for what these filters are used for in the measurement systems. And in the end I have also uh, given some light to the relation between uh, uh, analyzing a system in the frequency domain as well as also analyzing the system in its time domain. So somehow I think and I hope that you have been enjoying this presentation and I wish you just good luck with your filter designs.